Today in our 2017 Subaru Outback Wagon, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Curt Class 3 Custom Fit Trailer Hitch Receiver. So here's what our hitch is going to look like once we have it installed in our Outback. The cross tube is going to be completely hidden. It's going to have a really nice clean appearance to it because all we're going to see is that receiver tube sticking out. Our hitch is going to give us a 2 inch by 2 inch receiver tube opening, so we're going to have a really wide variety of accessories that we can mount up. Anything like a bike rack, cargo carrier, or even a ball mount to tow a trailer. Now the way we're going to mount any of those accessories is through the hitch pin hole here on this side. Now our hitch is going to accept a standard 5 ace pin and clip. Now these are not included with the hitch, but you can pick them up here at eTrailer.com along with some locking devices to make sure your accessories are secure. Now if you do plan on doing some towing, we do have to hook up our safety chains. The connection is going to be a loop style welded to the bottom of the receiver tube and as you can see, we have plenty of room to get most size hooks on or off, and even some of the smaller hooks will still have plenty of room. As far as the weight capacity is concerned, our hitch is going to have a 600 pound tongue weight. That's going to be the maximum downward force at the receiver tube. That's going to be great for some of those larger cargo carriers, or even bike racks that have all the way up to four or five bikes. Our hitch is going to have a 4,000 pound gross trailer weight rating. That's the amount it can pull, including the trailer and everything we have loaded on it. But you always want to keep in mind, double check your Subaru's owner's manual because you don't want to exceed the manufacturer's recommended weight. I'm going to give you a few measurements and these are going to help you out whenever you're looking for accessories for your hitch. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the outermost edge of the bumper, it's right about 3 inches. That measurement is going to help you out when you're looking at folding accessories to make sure you have enough room and they're not going to come in contact with the rear bumper. From the ground to the inside top edge of the receiver tube opening, it's right about 16 inches. That measurement is going to help you when you're looking for a ball mount so you can match it up to your trailer and you find the appropriate rise or drop. But now that we've seen what our hitch looks like and gone over some of the features, let's show you how to get it installed. To start out, you're going to want to open up your hatch and then we're going to come to our tail lights. Now on the inside edge right where the hatch sits, we're going to have two push pin fasteners that are holding this plastic cover in place. Now you'll notice that there's going to be a Phillips bit in the center so we can grab a Phillips screwdriver and you want to very loosely turn those and you'll notice when you're turning it the center is going to pop out. Once that does, we can grab a flathead screwdriver or trim panel tool. We're going to pry out on the center which will bring the base out a little bit more and we can pull the whole thing out. You can remove that and we'll grab the cover. You may have to pop it out and once you have it kind of pulled away if we lift up slightly it should release and we can pull it out. That's going to expose the two bolts that are actually holding the taillight assembly in place. So we'll grab a 10 millimeter socket and we're going to pull both of those out. With those removed we're going to grab our taillight and you want to pull straight back because there are some alignment pins and we don't want those to break. So just kind of work it back and forth a little bit, but not too much because again, you don't want to break those pins. And we'll pull straight back. Then we can disconnect the harness and all the plugs that are attached. So just twist and pull these two out. And then with this one right here, we're going to press in on that tab and we can pull the connector out and we can set our tail out assembly aside where it won't get damaged and we'll pull the other side out as well. Now if we come down from where our tail lights are we'll have this plastic cover and get a flat blade screwdriver and we can pop it open. And that's going to expose a bolt behind there so we'll grab a 10 millimeter socket and we're going to pull that out. And we're going to have these bolts on each side so we want to pull out the other one as well. If we move to our rear wheel well, we're going to have these three holes. Yours most likely has fasteners in them, and they're most likely push pin fasteners. They're just those plastic ones like we have with our taillight housing. So you want to remove those if they are there. But if we move up close to where our fascia stops, right by the fender here, we're going to have another push pin fastener. This one's going to be a little bit different though. This time we're going to take a flat blade screwdriver and if you look the center is recessed a little bit and instead of prying out the center like we did with the other ones we're going to push in on the center until it goes all the way in 
And then we want to pry out on the base. And we'll remove that and we'll pull all the fasteners out of the other side as well. Now if we come underneath the rear bumper here, on each side we're going to have two more push pin fasteners and then we'll have three that are going to go along the center on the back. So again, we'll just need to grab a flathead screwdriver and we'll pull all these push pin fasteners out. Now this one is the kind where you pop out the center and then pull the base out. These can be a little stiff sometimes, you just want to make sure you don't break them. Take your time popping that center section out so it'll take all that tension off. And then we'll just repeat that, pulling out all the other pushpin fasteners on the bottom here. At this point, it'd be a good idea to get an extra set of hands because we're gonna pull the fascia off. So we'll start at the corner here. And you just wanna grab the fascia and we're gonna start peeling it back. And that's gonna release those clips here. And we're just gonna work our way towards the center. But once you get to right about the tail light, you may have to lift up a little bit to get it to break loose. Now you do want to be careful when you're pulling it off. You don't want to go too far because you may have some sensors on the driver's side. Ours doesn't, but if you have the backup sensors, they are going to be over the driver's side area. So we're going to go ahead and set our fascia aside where it won't get damaged. Now we're going to need to pull our bumper beam off, but in order to get access to the bolts, we're going to go ahead and pull this foam piece off. Just kind of lift up and you can pull away. And that'll give us access to the bolts to these few holes here. So we grab a 14 millimeter socket and a long extension. I'm gonna pass it through the hole. That way I can get a straight shot. We're gonna pull all the nuts that are holding our bumper beam in place off. Now you wanna hold on to all this hardware because we are gonna be reusing it. What I like to do is I like to leave one just real loose but hand tight on there. That way in case once I take the last one off, I don't have to worry about it falling off completely. And once we have all the bolts removed, we can pull our bumper beam off and we'll set it aside for right now. And right in the center, we're gonna have our fascia support here. Now our receiver tube is gonna be right in the way. So we're actually gonna need to bend this up so it's nice and flat against the body here. I'm going to take a rubber mallet and just bend it in so it's nice and flat and we have that room now for our receiver tube. We can grab our hitch now and the holes in the side plates here are going to line up with the studs that our bumper beam was on. And now we're going to grab our bumper beam and sandwich everything together so it's nice and secure against the car and we'll be reusing the factory nuts. Now since I'm doing this by myself, I'm going to take a nut and again, just real loosely put it on there so I don't have to worry about the hitch falling off. And now that I have my bumper beam here, I'm going to go ahead and take that nut off. Lining up all the holes. Then you want to make sure you get at least one nut on each side. That way it'll hold everything in place. I'm going to come back with that 14 millimeter socket. I'm going to tighten up all the nuts holding everything in place. Now before we put our fascia back in place, we are going to have to trim a section out so our receiver tube can fit through. Now there are measurements in your instructions, I just suggest making a rough drawing, cutting a little bit smaller, because we can always go back and cut more out if we need to, but we can't replace the material. Now whenever you are cutting this out, you can use a razor knife, a pair of tin snips. I'm going to be using a rotary tool to make a quick, clean cut. We can always come back with a razor knife, clean up the edges if we need to. And don't forget to put the foam piece back in before we put our fascia back in place. Now we're ready to put our fascia back on, and again, it'd be a good idea to have an extra set of hands. Kind of want to line everything up, make sure that it goes around the receiver tube. And then I always found if you can get this section right below your tail light lined up, everything else will more or less fall into place. Now 
And with our fascia back in place and everything put back together, we're ready to hit the road. That'll finish up your look at the Kurt Class 3 Custom Fit Trailer Hitch Receiver on our 2017 Subaru Outback Wagon.